is Insta Composer, Insta Good, or Insta Trash? Let's find out. Trap Tendo. What is going on, peoples? DJ App here, and we're gonna check out Insta Composer in this video. I'm gonna do a review on it. I'm gonna weigh in with my pros and cons, and I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comments section. Uh, by the way, it does work for both Windows and Mac and all DAWs, so make sure that you know that. Uh, the link will be in the description box, and I definitely wanna hear from you guys. Is it Insta good or is it Insta trash? Like I said at the beginning of the video, and we'll see uh, firsthand of all of its functionality and I will let you judge that, of course. When you click on the link in the description box, it will take you to Plugin Boutique. It does help support my channel at no additional cost to you, but I also wanna point out that there is a demo version, so they're not trying to hide anything from you, they just want you to check it out. So, let's begin. So here is Insta Composer in the flesh, and this is how the UI looks like. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just play a preview, so. That's why I got from playing around with it. Uh, my first impressions of this was, man, if you are a sample pack creator or a loop sample pack creator, this is kind of like a great tool for you to own. But, more so on to the functionality of this. Um, the one thing that I did notice was the scaling was a bit off when I, I started off. And by going into menu and selecting the UI scaling, you can uh, raise it all the way up to 200% and 200% is a little too big for the screen. And I would just choose like 120%. Uh, the reason why I chose Ableton Live is because it's clip-based production. And again, if you are like a sample-based producer and you have a, a ton of VST plugins, and you might have beat block or whatever, or you just need a basic idea. Uh, this is where Insta Composer shines. I know a lot of people don't like for me to talk about these type of tools, but hey, you know, it is what it is. So uh, it's broken down into five different channels. Your first channel by default is a melody channel. Then you have a rhythm channel, and then you have a bass channel, pads, and chords. So, you know, I, I just want you guys to see, you know, its functionality at hand. Uh, you have an area where you can use a predefined root key, uh, like I have right here. I had a F minor, so I'm going to go ahead and select maybe an E minor, uh, something a little different. I, I just keep it on minor for right now. And uh, you can do this right here, which is a pretty easy thing to do. It does. It is a bit clunky. That's the thing I, I noticed. It's a little clunky. Yeah, but. Uh, anyway, so you can choose to change any of those channels at any given time. You can just press one, two, three, four, five, and and just hit go. And if you want to just change your chord progression, boom, you can change your chord progression right in front of you. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit all, and then I'm going to show you the next functionality, uh, which I think is very useful, and that is this right here, drag and drop. So if you're into dragging and dropping, uh, your MIDI over into maybe your MIDI channel or what what do they call that? Your channel in FL Studio or into your clip, uh, you can. It, it works the same. Just trust me on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over. Uh, I'm going to go over here and drag the melody over and we're going to hear how it sounds so far. So... Now, what I've noticed from using this device here, it some of it sounds a little samey. Uh, you also see that you know they are based off of whole note progressions. Uh, also, the other thing that I want you guys to see, though, uh, because I know a lot of the music theory purists out here will say, "Well, you're not learning music theory when you use these type of plugins." Well, guess what? Uh, you are because it will tell you, you know, like E sus two. Uh, G sharp minor, uh, E major, and a B major is, is what this progression is made up of. So uh, that is a strong tool of expression. Uh, I've clicked on this and you can also change uh, your different progression to whatever you want it to be. So let's say, I guess, was that a B major? Let's go with a major ninth with a sharp boop. Uh, do that, 
Uh, let's hit go. And now you can kind of just change whatever. Try to pick out sounds that will sound more realistic or whatever. Uh, and, and give people an instance of. Now, like I said, it still has some weirdness to it, or I wouldn't say weirdness. I would say it, it, it can be a little sterile in terms of its functionality. And that's why I want to point out this right here, uh, where you have your general options and you can change them. So if I want my chords to be basic, I could change the uh, general chords to be basic. I could do more exotic chords. Uh, I could do uh, more population. I could do uh, chromatic. You know, you could do less or more and you can double click. You can double left click or double click and it will reset that parameter just in case. Uh, if you want to do more based on the scale in terms of notes or or like chords, you can, uh, but it will affect the melody and melodies are basically just like one note or whatnot. So because if you put two notes together, it will be a chord, right? So you could do that. Uh, you can have bar structure. You can do random or smart and let's bring it less down to uh, or attenuate it back to more so random than smart. Uh, bar combos. We're going we're gonna to change the bar combo. Uh, we're going to choose fill and add fills. And then you also can change velocity. You can do more additive. You can do shorter or longer uh, progressions. Uh, you could do uh, more repeat, less repeat. You know, I'm going to do less and I'm going to crank up the variation. Uh, we could do velocity, control that. You can control the how small or wide the range is. Let's do small range and then uh, do follow pattern. And then yes, uh, random harmonics. We can add a little bit of random harmonics. I don't know how it will sound like. And then you have harmonic and timing. You can change the harmony to yes. Let's go ahead and do yes. Uh, you could do less or more. Let's do more. Let's do variations. Let's put that to a yes. We can humanize it too, just so, so it doesn't seem so sterile. Uh, you could offset. Let's do a lot of offset here. We're going to exaggerate it and sync harmonics. Let's go ahead and uh, tr crank that up to yes. And then choose a little bit of strumming because you don't play stuff realistically uh, like locked into a grid. Let, let's be real about that. And then do some occurrence. Boom. And then we'll just have it on all. Boom. And now we have a new progression. I'm going to just drag everything over yet again. And, you know, we'll just judge it from here. So if it sounds like a massive amount of poop and I see that melody looks more or less like uh, sheesh, like a, like a progression, like chords. And we're going to see. We're going to hope for the best. Uh, it didn't sound very good uh, when, when putting in stuff. So you got to be mindful of, of how much you want to change. Uh, I'm going to put it to an E harmonic minor and we're going to hope for the best here. Uh, I see that it has. Uh, some things that are ready for it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose all. Let's flip it one more time. And then I'm going to drag everything over yet again. Yeah, I would say that sounds like an E harmonic minor. That sounds a little metro boomy. Uh, th again, there are other options that you have up here on the top. Uh, you can have track mode, you can edit. Let's go over here and you can transpose. So if you want to transpose up seven, then you can do that. Uh, one thing I see that's missing that usually are on these music theory plugins, like I just changed that. What if I want to go back? There's no undo button. So I will definitely uh, use that as a con for later when I talk about, you know, weighing in on the hot takes or whatnot. Uh, then you have panic just in case if the plugin starts acting crazy or whatever, you know, but I'm not using it in the sense that I'm tying it into a, a plugin uh, natively. Uh, again, one of the things that I want to point out here is that you have the ability to change the beats and bars so you can change time signature. So what if you want to write like a six, eight, uh, you can change it to a six, eight. I highly recommend whatever DAW that you're using that you make that adjustment. So I'm going to make this into a 6-8 uh, time signature and boom. So let's go ahead and do that. Roll go and let's get out of editor mode and then just do the drag and drop thing again. And we're going to hear 
how it sounds like, of course, uh, and momentarily, and see if it uh, does anything different here. So. I ain't gonna lie to you. That is freaking dope. Time signatures are something that we ignore all of the time because 4-4 is very common. And that's 4-4 is actually, when you see a C on sheet music, that means 4-4 common progression or common uh, time signatures there. So uh, I'm very impressed with that feature. For those who are wondering what pl other plugins I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and close uh, Instant Composer and pull them up. I'm using Analog uh, Lab V, if that's how you say that, uh, by Acheria. Uh, I'm using that on both channels here. Uh, and then I'm using uh, Mellotron, you know, at the very end of that, which is also an Acheria plugin, a part of the Acheria V collection, which one, if it goes on sale, I highly recommend this, but I'm pretty sure you guys already know that this is fly. So, tell me how you feel about this plugin. I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, is Insta quick. <laughs> <laughs> is it's the composer is the good or is the trash i definitely want to hear from you guys uh i'm gonna weigh in with my hot take so uh one of the pros that i would say as far as me just opening up and playing with it just firsthand because that was my first impression and and i know how the plugin works of course i dabble with it a little bit uh it seems like a very good tool for people that like to create their own samples so it has that tool there so yeah just use your imaginations if you have a whole bunch of vst plugins especially some of which where you can create orchestra or world ethnic type pr production I, you, you you know the vibes here uh con i think the ui sometimes from wa productions is a little nutty uh, but i would say they did a great job of not convoluting it with too many options where you just like man how does this work it's very simple to use you can drag and drop all the stuff in there and i think those are great pros that i want to point out i know a lot of the music theory nuts out there just do not like these type of plugins and that's why i would say the biggest pro would be that they at least allow you to see what is the chord that is being passed in every part. And that's where I would say it's another con uh, that it works in like whole notes as far as the chords. And that's a bit displeasing, but again, you can edit it. So that's a pro there. You can edit this stuff after the fact to get it the way you want, or you can just drag it into your channel in FL Studio or into your piano roll in any other DAW, I guess would be the best way to say that. So that is a huge plus in itself. Do I give this the stamp of approval? Well, I would say about 80%.